Hey, 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 my friend. Welcome back to Keeping It Real with Sidereal for our weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of May 20th through May 26th. Yes, May 26th. <laughs> if you are new here, hey, 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 my name is Danny C. Muniz, intuitive astrologer, spiritual healer, helping you find peace in the chaos. My friend, we are diving into this week's astrology with our full moon in Scorpio. So we are in Taurus season. This is our officially our second week of Taurus season, and we have our full moon in Scorpio. So we're going to talk all about what that dynamic is between Taurus and Scorpio because they are opposite of each other, and then how it is flavored based on what it's interacting with this week. So let's dive in to our forecast for the week, my friend. If you are on YouTube, just to let you know, if you just want to listen to this, we do have this same exact uh, forecast over on the Cosmic Mystic podcast. You can find that down in the description box. And if you are on the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, hello, my friend, you can see all the visuals and you can see me talking over on the YouTube channel, Keeping It Real with Sidereal. I just want to say thank you, whether you're catching this on YouTube or the podcast, uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and hearing what is going on in our sky and how it is affecting you. I tend to be a positive astrologer. So uh, if you like the positive vibes, then you are in the right place. So let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to dive in to this week's forecast. So we are kicking this week off. Uh, as always, we want to start with where is our sun I always like to just show you here on the chart. If we look up in the sky, we can see that our sun is here at five degrees Taurus, five degrees Taurus. So we are kicking off very early. As I said, we are just in the first week of being in Taurus season. So again, you can go back and you can listen to either the May overview or you can listen to last week's forecast where I talked more about Taurus energy, Taurus season. And there is a full podcast episode. It's a, about 120 minutes, 120 minutes. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's right. 120 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes actually is what it is. An hour and 20 minutes long of um, just really diving into Taurus. So if you want to hear more about Taurus, then check out either of those. I'll make sure that they are linked down in the description and the show notes uh, if you're on the podcast. But this energy is very grounding energy. It's very stable energy, secure energy. And so you might be feeling like that kind of like, ah, like feeling who grounded and stable. Now this energy can be more difficult for my fire and air element. So if you have a sun, moon, or rising sign in an air sign or a fire sign, you may be feeling this um, a little bit not as friendly uh, for some and others may be like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I like this, right? It's a different feeling. Now, my earth and uh, water friends, you probably are really enjoying this energy because it is definitely more your vibe and, <clears throat> excuse me, definitely a little bit slower. So, Taurus is all about stopping to smell the roses. Now, we do have it being influenced just a bit here, as you can see. If I pull this back, we start off with this influence here with Jupiter, and we have the influence with Venus, which are conjunct. So they're hanging out at the house, as you've probably heard me in the past. They are all hanging out at the house uh, in the vibe of Taurus chilling on some couches, having some yummy food and some drinks. Let's just say that expanding us, giving us that luck and that opportunity. 
Venus is bringing in that feeling of that luxury vibe, that really beautiful energy, that love, and just wanting to really pour in uh, to the sun. And we also have got Neptune here really bringing in that more imagination, that dreamy energy, that creative energy. And then we've got the trine over here to Pluto, which is definitely bringing in that transformation vibe, that kind of going a little bit deeper vibe. Now in Aries, things were very rapid and things were moving quite a bit. When we move in to Taurus, it slowed us down. And so Pluto's like, okay, Pluto's in Capricorn and it is retrograde. So this is definitely more of an internal shift and evaluation that is happening here, but it's wanting us to dive a little bit deeper. Now, our earth energy wants to definitely go deeper, go into things. And so we can feel this happening. So I've had many people uh, uh, talk to me already about how this energy is starting to affect them. And when we get into the full moon, you're going to see even more how you might be seeing this in your environment. But we've got some really nice energy here. Um, when the sun is conjunct Jupiter, it's said to be a very opportunity, uh, luck type of day. It's one of the luckiest days of the year. And so let me show you right here when that is, because we like to see all the things, right? Okay. So, um, I'm going to move it back because we just, I went forward and I meant to go back right here on the 19th. So I want you to look back at the 19th. What was happening on Sunday for you? There was a really, really beautiful opportunities for you, probably even something that may have been out of the blue. Okay, moving on. We're still in that vibe here, starting with Monday and even into Tuesday. And then it starts to kind of fall off. So this first part of the week is really a great opportunity. You might even be feeling optimistic mystic and like nobody's gonna bring me down <laughs> ain't no bad news if you watched uh, the way growing up like I did um ain't no don't ain't nobody bring me no bad news that was definitely the vibe here okay now let's move on to our beautiful moon so I always like to talk about the moon here because our moon is our emotional energy. It is our drive. Many cultures focus more on the moon than they actually do on the sun because the sun is our consciousness. The moon is our subconsciousness. It's how we innately react and respond to our environment, to our world. And if you are in the healing space or you are doing healing work yourself, so I would call you a healer too. If you are in that energy, you understand that emotions, right? That uh, there could have been a situation that happened in the past where there was a energetic charge or an emotional charge around that situation, whether it was the actual situation, but more so how you perceived that in, in uh, situation and the meaning that you gave to that. And so the moon is very, very powerful. And every week it's going through a different, a couple of different zodiac signs. And so when we can really start to attune to where the moon is, knowing where our emotional energy might be and tap into it, it becomes really beautiful productivity tool. Now, this was something I learned from Vanessa Corazon uh, with the Moon Sight Planner. She is a business astrologer and she really does focus on tropical, uh, but she's got some really great information around using the moon as a productivity tool. So we begin here in Libra and Libra is an air sign. So this is air signs are always really good for researching, brainstorming, finishing up quick tasks. Um, it's quick errands. It's not the long drawn out projects. Don't try to do that here. That's not going to work. Um, but Libra is more of the balance and harmony. So you might be seeking more of that in your day, really trying to make sure you're balancing things out. And we're going to see this energy here Monday, Tuesday, and then 
Wednesday at the very early part of our day, and then right around noon central time, it's going to shift into the beautiful energy <laughs> of Scorpio. <laughs> and that is where we are preparing. So Wednesday afternoon into Thursday, and the very, very early part of Friday. So probably till a little bit early afternoon, we will be in the energy of Scorpio. So let's talk a little bit about Scorpio here. So Scorpio is our energy of water. It's the element of water and it is going deep. It is going below the surface. There's often the association of the mysteries of the occult. Um, it's ruled by the, the planet Pluto. So there's a lot of power, a lot of control, a lot of transformation energy that happens here. And so this energy is really great for deep inner work really great for deep inner work. It's also great to work with um, your sense of power, your sense of control, whether you need to release that control or maybe there's some control that you need to put in, in into your life. Um, also the power, like your influence. How are you influencing people? Is that influencing, is it a positive influence? Is it a more negative or challenging influence that you are giving out to others? How are you magnetizing people to you? This is also a really good time to work on that. From a business standpoint, water uh, element is a great time to do the deeper work. So whether that's you working with clients, if you're in that space, or you doing your own work, this is also a good time to work on creative projects, the more artistic aspect of things, as well as emotional content. So whether that's writing that emotional post, uh, recording that emotional video, and when I say emotion, it's like really being able to tune into the emotion. Now we move in on, as I said, Saturday afternoon and Sunday and then even into a little bit here on Monday, most of Monday, we will see the moon. Um, I'm sorry, no, most all of Sunday, uh, we will see. So Saturday and Sunday, we will see the moon in Sagittarius as well as that late afternoon on Friday. Sagittarius is a fire element. And so it is focused on action. It is more focused on do the actual of like doing the thing. So you might research, right, with that air element with Libra, and then you might get into that creative energy with the water element. And then on, you know, over the weekend, it's like, let's take some action on this thing. Now, Sagittarius is a very optimistic sign. It's very um, wanting to grow things, wanting to expand things, wanting to push past the limits. So it, it's really pushing as much as you possibly can. So where last weekend we were in that earth element, that Virgo energy, which was really digging in and getting to work, Sagittarius is all about being out and doing the thing, like doing whatever it might be. So whether that's hanging out with friends or, or hosting something or doing, it's like a doing energy. Um, I would say be careful of expanding things too much or being so optimistic that we're not being logical because sometimes that can get in the way here with the moon in Sagittarius. Now I want to go back and look at this full moon on Thursday. So we have our full moon on Thursday and it's very early in the morning. So it's going to be about 8.52 a.m. Central Time. We can see this here. So we've got a couple of things at play. First off, we've got the opposition of the sun and the moon, which makes this a full moon. We've still got that um, connection here with Jupiter, Venus, and the sun. So we've still got that conjunction here. They're still hanging out, having their party. We've also got a trine over here with that Neptune energy. So we're still bringing in that Neptune. And we've got that sextile over here to Pluto. So let's talk a little bit 
about what those energies are. Now, first off, let's talk about Taurus Scorpio. I said Taurus was the earth sign. Scorpio is the water element. So from that standpoint, we're talking about very grounded, rooted, um, energy, right? We're talking about that very stop and smell the roses. Where on the other hand, and it's very much about the senses, Torahs, and the material things, like the physical, tangible things that it can taste, it can touch, it can smell, it can hear. So when we're looking at Scorpio, it's the water element and it is about transformation. So it, it it's like wanting to, to dive deeper into why I have this emotion, why I am understanding this thing or why I want this, I have this desire. It's wanting to go beneath the surface and is often associated with the mysteries, with the esoteric. So the occult. So it's beyond, right? Beyond the physical, tangible things. Now with that connection to um, Neptune, there's more of a heightened sensitivity here. So creativity and imagination are also, um, really, they're really heightened as well as your psychic abilities. So for those of you that are channelers, pay attention to the information that you are receiving, uh, because there is a lot of information that wants to come through here. Um, really good connection, uh, to to people and in particular in relationships. But I want to say this here, because we're talking about an opposition. Anytime we talk about an opposition, there is tension. It is not, um, they, they're they almost on opposite sides of each other. As you can see in the chart here, they are on opposite sides of each other. So it's like, you know, the person that loves to wake up early in the morning versus the person that loves to stay up late. Now, are either right or are either wrong? No, <laughs> right? They both serve the purpose for that particular person. So it's not like the Scorpio energy is better than the Taurus energy. They have their place and their purpose. But these two are fighting in some ways against each other to create tension within us to make some type of change, to bring up what is it that we truly desire and how do we and where are we now? I did I did a card pull on Monday inside the Enlightened Circles community over on Facebook. And there was the card that we got was a square. And it was that tension energy, very similar to this opposition where we're on opposite sides, but we want the same thing. So this full moon is where are you on opposite sides of whatever it is that you're trying to make the change in? Now, I would relate back to the ideas and the themes of Taurus or the themes of Scorpio, but where is that, what is that desire for you? Like, what is it that you want in that particular area of your life or in that particular energy? And then where is the tension there? Because whatever it is that you are doing right now, my friend, is serving a purpose. And I dove into this inside that reading. But whatever it is that you desire and you're stuck, you're like almost as if you're stuck in this position. I use the example of exercising. I do. Me and exercise do not, we do not get along. <laughs> That's we are not friends. And so there's a, there's a challenge for me because I want to be healthier. I want to move my body. I know the more I move my body, the better my body feels, but yet I still don't do it. There's a reason why I'm still not doing it. It's because there is there not doing it is serving a purpose for me. And so because it is serving that purpose for me, I don't need to make a change because it's serving a purpose. Now, if I were to dive deep into that and to uncover why or what purpose it's serving, I can get some insights to then go and do some deeper work and really look to shift that energy, to move through that energy as to why maybe that is happening for me. So I would ask you, as you're looking at this full moon and looking at this energy here, 
what is the tension that you are having with whatever it is that you desire? Whatever it is, whether you're wanting to make a change in your relationship, wanting to make a change for yourself, wanting to make a change in your business, where is the tension? Where is, what is it the desire that you want and where are you now and what is working for you? Because that's what it is. It's working for you right now. Although my friend, you're probably like, but it's not Danny. <laughs> I know not exercising is not working for me. Like I can tell my clothes are getting tighter, right? I, I can tell they don't feel, I don't feel as good in my body as I have in the past. So yes, and I agree, it is not working for me, but there is something that is, which is why I'm still here, okay? So let's move on to our next shit, um, next, I was going to say shit, wow. All right, I still said it. We're going to go with Mercury. Let's look at our beautiful planet here of Mercury. So uh, let me go back to the beginning of the week here. So we still have this square over here to Pluto that's going to, that uh, ends on Monday. And then we're going to see Saturn pull in here. So we'll see this go here. Uh, and then we'll see Saturn pull in right there. On the 24th, on Friday, we'll see this sextile here to Saturn. So let me tell you a little bit about this because this is nice. We've got really clear thinking, good judgment, and good organizational skills here. This is a good time to catch up on paperwork, study, research. Um, there's like this concentration which is what I love with Saturn here. There's a concentration um, focus on whatever it is that we are working on, or whatever it is that we are wanting to do. So business is really good during this time because everybody's in this really clear, good judgment type energy. Long-term investments are also really good as well as making long-term plans because we've got that Saturn energy in here, which is like for that long haul. Um, this what might even also, for those of you that work with the ancestral energy, good time to work with your ancestors, to call them in um, or do some deeper research into your lineage, whether it is in this lifetime or another lifetime. Uh, so we've got that coming in till the end of the month. So this is going to be a good week of us being able to connect into that energy. All right. And then we have the beautiful uh, Venus. So let me tell you, we've got Venus. Let me get Venus up here. So we see that she is conjunct the sun. And we've also see that we've got this uh, connection with Jupiter and even that square over to Pluto. Now that does fall off on the 20, uh, when does that fall off? On the 18th, um, Pluto till the 29th. So Pluto comes in here on the 21st. Um, there we go. So we'll see Uranus fall off here and then we'll see the Pluto come in. So Pluto on the 24th, which I wanted to talk about, and it'll be till the end of the month here, is there's an intensity of passion that is coming in when we're talking about Pluto and Venus. Uh, yeah, Pluto and Venus, in particularly around the area of love and affection. So whether you're in a relationship or you're starting a new relationship or you're looking for relationships, this energy is going to increase. So the idea of wanting to be connected, wanting to um, connect with your partner, wanting to um, find a partner or have that uh, love and affection in your life is is coming in here. Okay. So if you're somebody who is single, I want you to be mindful. This relationship that you might start uh, can be intense, extremely intense. And it can also be a pretty good long-term relationship depending on where this is falling in your chart, because there could be some other aspects, but just as a general idea, it's going to be really intense and that can be mistaken. Um, so I want you to pay attention to your intuition and trust yourself, my friend, because that, that intuition is going to help you steer away from 
it just being like loving that intensity versus it's this actually being something um, that is meant for you. All right. Now the last thing I want to talk about here is Mars. So we've got this Mars energy, which is uh, conjunct Chiron and is also conjunct our North node. And which means it automatically is in opposition to our South node. So I want to talk about the Chiron energy because Mars and Chiron can be a little bit challenging. So with this transit, reoccurring issues are brought to the forefront, meaning there are unresolved issues. There are unresolved problems that are wanting to be addressed. And with Mars, Mars wants to take action on something. It wants to like clear this out of the way. Like, I want this here. I don't want this around me. We need to let this go. We need to move on. So bringing this into our consciousness, into our attention is going to feel a little weird because it's like, I don't want this, but it also is coming up so that you can get rid of it. <laughs> so it's desire to take action to overcome this pain or this challenge from the past. Um, there could be the feeling of helplessness, um, not being able to do this, which can also bring in passive aggressiveness, right? Where it's, I am feeling um, this, uh, these emotions, I'm feeling the this this tension in my body, right? And I don't know what to do with it. And so I'm stepping into the energy of passive aggressive. Um, one of my good friends messaged me. And she was like, oh my goodness, my, you know, so-and-so called me and, or text me and this, da -da 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 -da, and like this whole thing, right? And, you know, got her riled up, but this thing wasn't even about, like, I reminded her, it's not about you and it's not about these things that this person is asking for you. It's about this person not knowing how to express what it is that they need to express, right? I see this with my mother-in-law all the time uh, when she's had an argument with somebody or she's in frustration and then she, you know, lays it on my love. <laughs> um, so you're going to want to confront these conflicts head on um, and stay committed to your goals. Stay committed to what you desire. Now with my friend, she he was like, you know what? I am not going to respond to this. And I don't even know if I am going to respond to this, right? It's identifying like, what is it that you want to do with this energy? Because sometimes people just need to blow stuff off, right? And sometimes if there's a bigger underlying issue there that's wanting to be resolved and that person is feeling this, but they don't know how to express that, right? We, we don't learn this stuff, right? There's nothing wrong with that. We just don't learn it. And so now that this is in our work, you're here, you're listening, you're somebody who is into working um, on yourself and on a spiritual journey. Notice what is taking you away from your goal and what is helping you stay committed to your goal. Okay. Um, this can be a little bit of a painful transit. I will say that. And it's an opportunity to heal some really good wounds. All right, my friend, that is our sidereal astrology forecast for the week of May 20th through the 26th. Um, be sure to uh, check the description box and the show notes for all the links of all the things. Uh, we will have a new forecast coming out uh, next week, and we will also have our June overview forecast coming out as well. All right, my friend, enjoy the rest of your day, and let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. and find peace.